everyone. Thank you for stopping by today. This is Sandy from Color Creatively. And uh, I don't know if this video is going to be in two parts or one part, uh, but I want to do um, some, show you some pictures of the kimono designs and Asian uh, designs that I've colored in the past because I have um, had a lot of requests for that since I started working on Nathaniel Wake's book on my last live stream. So I'm going to give you this sort of quick look through and then I'm going to show you some coloring. We're going to do some coloring and some background on the picture that I'm currently working on. I hope you bear with me today. I'm under the weather. I have the, had the flu for about four days and today is better but I'm not totally over it and when I started to make this video I knocked my camera and my tripod over so hopefully all my equipment didn't get damaged and this will come out okay I'm going to start with Creative Haven oh let me say that, that I want to make an announcement today on this video and also I want to make an announcement on Thursday on my live stream uh, in the month of July, you have until the last day of the month, um, if you color any pictures by C.L. Aldridge, you can look her coloring books up on Amazon. If you don't have her coloring books, you can look up C.L. Aldridge Art on um, SD, and I'll put a link in this video below, so you can go over there, and if you want to just buy one picture, you can do that. Anyone who colors any C.L. Aldridge pictures this month and submits them to me by the last day, I am going to be making a movie next month, just like I'm, I did this month in July. So check out my channel. I have a movie. Uh, it's called Pictures Colored by You. And so anyone that does pictures colored by C.L. Aldridge for the month of July, I will be making at the end of the month or the first of the next month a movie and your pictures will be featured in it with your name. So submit the name of the coloring book to me and of course it's C.L. Aldridge as the artist and uh, please just uh, stick to those um, that theme, okay? Uh, probably in August I will have a theme where you can send me any picture from any coloring book but right now for July I want to do C.L. Aldridge last time we did fairies so we'll change the theme from time to time okay right now I want to show you my kimono designs I use Creative Haven's book Japanese kimono designs and let's see who they're by Mung Ju Sun, and I love her work. Okay, here's one of them that I did. And to get the sparkly on the uh, midriff cummerbund here, I used throughout this whole thing the Extreme Glitter Hologram by Folk Art. The reason I use it is because you can put it on with a paintbrush. It is very, very fine glitter. It's not going to overwhelm the uh, art. And I thought for Asian art it needed to be... It's, it's not, I want to say subtle, but it, it is sparkly. But it's not thick. It's not in your face sparkly. I don't know how to describe it. So I put it on her dress, the hair pieces, and a lot of times around the middle of the kimonos. And I did the backgrounds with stencils, and I used uh, water uh, soluble crayons, and in some cases I used um, um, pastels. So you can do either one. And uh, I done these a while ago, so I don't remember exactly. Uh, what I did here, but I know this whole thing is pencil except for the background and I can see that's water-soluble crayon and down here too on the base is water-soluble crayon. Okay, and her skin tone was done with the Derwent skin tone pencils. 
That's how I did all the skin tone. Okay, this one, I hope you can see the sparkly on it too, is from the same book. And these are just uh, my ideas of putting something in the background to, I use stencil, I use pastels, and I use pencils. I'm not sure on which picture I did what, but in all of them I use the hologram extreme glitter. Okay, this one is pastels for sure, and pencils, and I did her skin with Derwent color soft pencils, and that's the skin tone set. You can use any pencils, any pastels, and any water-soluble crayons that you would like. You don't have to have the brand I have. I did these. These were a lot of fun. I just, I didn't think I would like it when I bought the books, but I got into it and I really liked, liked them a lot. I will show this again on Thursday on my live stream for some of you. And I did that one. This one I got a little different on. I took and made homemade stamps. That's a shelf liner here. And I stamped on ink. This is a hot pad, this hexagon shape. I cut it. It's silicon. You can buy it in the kitchen department of any store. And I stamped it in ink. And then I made my own star stamp. And uh, I went ahead and put uh, gold, uh, colored it in gold. I, I stamped it so I could outline it. And I colored it in gold, metallic gold pencil. And then I put the extreme glitter on it over the top. And this one has it on her hat also. So you can use your own objects you find at home. And I'm going to have a video as soon as I get over this flu on making a background with found objects in your home. And you can use uh, all kinds of medium to make a very simple background and it can look different. This one I took washi tape and put here and on here I took a security envelope that your bills, you want to pay your bills in. I cut the inside out and I put washi tape around it to color that door. So you can do that type of thing too. Okay, so those were out of the kimono book. What I want to show you now is the Japanese woodcut prints, and I have a rubber band around it because I take my books apart, and I they're not in order, so I can't give you a flip through of this, but it's these are historical. You'll see a sample picture in the front cover and in the back cover because these are historical um, paintings in Asia and at the bottom of the picture it will tell you who the artist was and what year he did this. This was from 1797 to 1861 when that artist lived. Um, so these I did in 2016. It's been a while ago. Uh, and these were the first two that I ever did. Um, these have a little bit, they have gel pen for the sparkle on the hat, hat and on the instrument. And it's all pencil, including the background. I was in, I, when I first did coloring, it was all pencil. So I did that one. And this is another one of the historical ones that I did. And these artists are in the 17 to 1800 range. Uh, doing famous Japanese uh, art. This one I finished and it's from the book I'm currently working in, uh, Japanese Life by Nathaniel Wake. And again, I took it apart because I am making copies of these pictures to print onto mixed media paper or cardstock. And Here's what I did. I did use this color theme 
However, my colors came out a little differently because it's not going to match exactly. And I did the hair with more silver in it than black. Um, and so uh, it's a geisha girl with exaggerated makeup and a pale skin. That's how geishas are. Okay, so I'm currently working on this picture here. I did it in the stream last Thursday. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do in the background and then show you how I'm coloring in these flowers. This is with Derwent watercolor pencils and it's with um, Arteza watercolor pencils. You can use any watercolor pencils you have or anything, any crayon, any colored pencil. It just doesn't have to be exactly what I'm doing. Um, I took this little dragon and made him silver, gray and black because of her hair and her hair piece. And the branch here is black. I want to repeat the sum color at least twice in the picture, sometimes more. So um, that way it sort of balances it more. So right now we're going to color in this and it's from Nathaniel Wake, Japanese Life, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I think first we'll show you the flower, and I'm using an Arteza pencil. These are budget friendly. I'm using the Fuchsia A014 and the Ubi, UBE A020. Okay, make sure I get the right pencil here. Let me. Yeah, that's the right one. Okay, and I'm using the Arteza water brushes. Um, this one, the name came off. I am um, Arteza water brushes. There's different sizes here. Let me see which one I'm using for the leaves. Okay, I'm using the small one for the leaves. And uh, this was all watercolored. And if you saw my live stream, I was watercoloring it as we went. I have done some more on it since that stream. And, uh, but I wanted to work on it a little bit in this picture to show you, or this video to show you how I'm actually doing this picture. I think I'll bring you in a little closer when I color. Okay. And it's watercolor, so I don't have to be exactly... Um, whoops, where's my paper towel? I do use a paper towel to wipe off my brush so I don't get too much water. And that's the key, not having too much water on your picture, whether you're coloring in the book, on the uh, color book paper, or whether you've printed it off, you want to make sure you keep the water to a minimum. Okay, and then um, I'll let that dry. We'll do a couple of these. And then I'm going to continue making videos on actual coloring step-by-step -step of certain drawings. I know some of you have told me you've missed that. And this last week, um, week and a half, I haven't been able to do that too much. So with all the uh, disasters that happened around here. And today, we have no water because the city cut it off. Uh, they're going to take all day to repair some main line down the street. Someone's uh, house, the pipes to their house broke or something. So... I wanted to take a shower, but we're without water, so that has to wait. It's just been one thing in June and July after another, and I'm hoping it ends. And then over this nice uh, 4th of July weekend, I got the flu, and I've been very, very sick. And uh, today I'm feeling the best I have in about four days, so I'm very happy about that. But I'm not back to normal yet. Okay, so I took those colors, colored it in, and then I just went and added a little darkness here of this darker purple and shaded it. 
just a little bit. That makes a huge difference. If you look at these flowers here, you'll see a difference. See, these need to be shaded. They've been colored in, but I haven't shaded them. And I'm not putting a lot on it, just enough to make a difference there. Okay. And just wherever. I'll put a little here at the base, just so it has some. There's no... I don't know, scientific way, <laughs> just doing it. And then I'm going to color that. But what I want to do on the rest of this video is show you how to do a background that I have had in my mind for this one. Okay, so that's how we did the flowers. That's how I did the kimono. That's how I did the little dragon. Uh, it was with watercolor pencils. Her hair, um, I did take a gel pen. A silver gel pen. This is a jelly roll metallic and do um, this piece in her hair and made some stripes in, the, in her hair. Okay, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm taking my husband's old t-shirt and it's really old and that's I cut it up. It's nice soft cotton. It's pretty yellow. It's pretty old, but I use these old t-shirts to apply my pastels. And I'm going to put pastel in the background here. And I am using the Mung Yo pastels, the 64 colors. These are budget friendly. They're very inexpensive for the whole set. I am also using a stencil um, abstract. Um, and this one will be used for the bottom to form a ground area because it looks like she's floating. But you can take any stencil that you have. If you don't have a stencil, you can take a piece of junk mail, a little heavy paper. You can cut design, you can draw designs in it, and you can cut them out. You can make your own, so you don't have to have the exact stencil. These were purchased a long, long time ago on Amazon, so I don't know if they still have them, but at any rate, you can choose any type of design that you would like for this process. So I'm going to take this blue color. These don't, do not have numbers. They do not have names. And I'm going to use that in the background. Going to take my trusty t-shirt. And I'm not going to apply it just, I'm not going to use the whole stencil. I'm only going to use this part and um, I'm not going to apply it everywhere. And I rub it on this. I don't take it out and handle it. It doesn't have to be messy. I don't take a blade and shave it off and then pick up the powder. I try to keep it as um, less messy as possible, if that's the right wording. Okay, and this is just an abstract design. You know, I'm going to take off these clips that I have because I want to be able to get to the corner of my picture here. Okay, and I've got cardstock underneath it. Okay, I'm just going to do a few designs here and there. I just like to add a little something and not leave the background totally white. But I don't want it to totally take away from my picture either. And it's not the same every time I do it. It'll be different. I just sort of go by how I feel at the time. I look at it, and sometimes I don't like it, so I go back and add something else, like here. I'm going to add some of the bubbles. I'm going to add a few bubbles here. And they're darker than, oops, yeah, that's the right color. 
they're darker than these bubbles, so I might go back over these bubbles. It's not going to be exact, but it'll look great. Okay. I'm just going to put a few lines here and there. Like I said, you can make your own stencils if you want to take some little firm paper that you can even just use your junk mail stuff. We get a lot of cards in the junk mail, and that can be used too. Let's see, I'm going to do some bubbles there. I might do a little bit there. And I just want to keep it, now see I have this edge of this paper dirty. Not from what I'm doing now, but it was from before, handling, handling it. So I'll just cover it up. Okay. And... Oops, I'm losing this on my finger. And I'm going to set it with hairspray, and I'll do that off camera. I actually use wig spray more than hairspray because the brand on Amazon is a little finer mist and it doesn't get my paper as wet. But if your paper buckles a little, you can just put it, put a, a book on it overnight and it will straighten out. It's not a big thing. Okay, let's see how that's looking. I think I need a little bit of, whoops, and if you make a mistake, and you don't want it like this one, I got a blob, I'm just going to erase it. That's it. And we can go and put anything in there that we want. So, let me get my finger back on here. I'll put a few bubbles there, a couple bubbles there. Uh, right here, I want to put just a few lines of these lines. Not much. Just fill it in a little bit. I got some more on my finger here. Okay. Um, that's it. I'm going to leave it like that. It's just, uh, whoops, let me do a little here. There we go. Okay, and that's all there is to it. And then what you want to do is you want to take and um, put some hairspray on it, and that will fix it so it won't smear and rub off. And uh, let me do this here, ground because it looks like she's floating. So when I took another stencil, and I'm going to go just over, let's see if I'm on camera, I'm not really watching like I normally do. Okay, uh, let me get another cloth here, or the same one. I want to go with the dark gray first. And I want to make it look like ground or bricks or whatever you want to call it. It looks like bricks or stones that she's on. And it also matches her hair and the little dragon. So I've repeated these colors in this picture. And it anchors the, the girl down so she's not floating. Uh, 
Okay, now I want to go over it with a little black because I want to make it, and I'll take a different part of the design. Okay, I'll take that smallest one. I'm not going to put a lot. I don't want to overwhelm it. Just enough. Whoops, I'm getting stuck here. This has a lot of holes in it, this stencil. Whoops, I didn't do it right there. Okay. There we go. I want a little black in it. And I don't want to overwhelm it. Okay, let me see what it looks like now. Okay, I think I'm going to bring some of the blue down a little bit closer so it's not just a distinct line. I'm going to put a little more blue in here. And just go by what you like and how you think it looks. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so I hope you can see this. I know the light in here is sort of bright. Maybe I can hold it this way. Let me zoom out and see if that helps. Okay, I'll have to look at this video because I can't really tell. But anyway, in person, I like it. And so that is uh, how I'm going, how I did finish this picture. You know, let me do this though. Uh, I didn't like that spot. Let me do one more thing up there. It looks a little vacant. There we go. Okay. So I hope you can see that design. And that is it for this picture. This coming Thursday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, I will be doing a live stream again. And um, I'm not sure which book I'm working in. I might be working in Nathaniel Wake book again, which, which I probably more than likely will and um, be using different mediums on each of my live streams. So, I want to thank you for stopping by. I hope this video has been informative, and I hope the people that wanted to see the kimonos were happy about that. And all I can say is until we meet again, happy coloring.